It's so long overdue for a Boren Blitz. Let's kick off this week. Happy uh, Eclipse Day. It is a Monday edition of the Podcast Daily and a Boren Blitz combined for the final week of spring camp. And Zach, I mean, trying to figure it out. It's been like four months, three months since we've done a show together. And I don't like it. It's too long. No, I know it's been way too long. Everything's happened. I've been, you know, writing, writing in my journal every day. I mean, my God, we have so much to talk about. Well, we don't have to get into everything in your journal, but like Ohio State's now in the in the final stretch here of spring camp. It goes so fast. Like you think it's going to be a long time. You get football for almost two months, but it's 15 practices, spring breaks thrown in there. It's a limited amount of time to get work done. I mean, from what you've little you've seen or heard around the Woody, how do you think big picture it's gone for the Buckeyes? Well, I'll tell you this much. There couldn't be more excitement around that facility, around that football program right now. Um, you know, it's funny that our last uh, conversation happened, you know, right after the, the first of the year. Um, we were talking about signing, signing day and what they needed to do, the transfer portal. And so from that conversation to now, it's crazy how the script has just completely flipped. And um, there is so much talent running around on, on that field currently over at the Woody Hayes. And I know from talking to coaches, um, from seeing things, right now it's about building the culture, building the toughness of that program, especially in the day and age now of – so many freshmen are coming in early, right? There are so many there. You've got so many transfer guys that are going to be a huge part of this team. So now it's about building that cohesiveness, building this team the way that Ryan Day and this coaching staff wants the Ohio State 2024 Buckeye team to look. Every conversation always seems to like focus solely on the quarterbacks for Ohio State. And obviously this this is going to be no different. This year's no different. That's going to determine whether this team wins a national championship or not. Or or maybe there's so much talent elsewhere that it doesn't matter if it's Devin Brown does win the job or Will Howard, uh, who we thought was definitely going to win the job, if it's him or Lincoln Keenholz or whatever happens with Julian Sand, like maybe they can win it in spite of all that or it doesn't make any difference. But like it feels like to me, and I don't know if you agree with this from the things you're seeing and hearing, Zach, like there hasn't been any separation necessarily at the top or enough that Ryan Day might go out on Saturday and name a starting quarterback. But it's it feels different to me than a year ago where we said the same thing about Kyle McCord and Devin Brown, and then it, that wound up like actually being an issue. It seems like the talent in that room has elevated where Ohio State could win no matter who it chooses. I'll tell you why it's different is because a year ago you had two guys, one in Kyle McCord who everyone thought had a bunch of talent um, but had not had any game like, um, you know, experience. And then you had Devin Brown, who everyone thought was talented, but was still super raw. And when it came to breaking down defenses, when it came to pre snap reads, hadn't made the progression that um, he needed to make at that point. But now you look at this year's competition and you have a Will Howard who's five years into college football and that's a very veteran guy that is, is sharp, uh, can talk football, um, has a whole bunch of skills. You have Devin Brown, who now has pieced together that mental aspect of the game to match the big arm that he has. And then to top it off, you've also got a guy like – Lincoln Keenholt, who now is a year into the football program and has picked up on the offense and mentally is there and now is able to compete. And you have a guy like Julian saying that I don't think Ohio State has had a true freshman like him in quite some time at the quarterback position. So you've got four guys who very easily could lead this football team and be very successful with this football team until it's just completely different from last year to this year. There were so many questions last year, but it was kind of like, oh man, what are we in for? To now there's a whole bunch of questions of, hey, doesn't matter what direction we go in, we're going to be super uh, confident in the guy that's leading this team on the offense side position. Oh yeah, you've got guys, you've got an offense line that's a year older. That, that can protect this guy. You've got weapons out the wazoo that you know you can do so many things with. And so it's a completely different feeling, but the same conversation because there is the unknown of who is that quarterback. Are, I thought going into spring, and I'm wrong a lot, but I thought Ryan Day was going to need to, if not name a starter, have a clear pecking order because there's a transfer portal that opens two days later. We can't have any conversation anymore, unfortunately, about college football without looping that in. And 
it felt like to me he would need to take control lest he lose control by somebody leaping for an opportunity. I'm not sure if I feel that way as strongly now as I did a month and a half ago because like because of what you said with four guys being capable, but also like some of the buy-in with Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz and understanding of the future that may be in front of them. Like it it perhaps doesn't have to be a situation where multiple guys are just angry and leaving a week from now next Monday. And maybe that's changed the situation, or maybe it hasn't. I, I don't know what you're the way you view that. Do you think Ohio State is going to carry this over as is normal competition, practice 16 in August, or will, or, or is he in a position where he may need to do something before he's ready? I think from the standpoint of Ryan Day, he doesn't need to name a quarterback and worry about the transfer portal because last year, it goes back to what we were talking about, you lose one of those guys, you're in a world of hurt. This year, you lose one, even two of those guys, I still think you're fine. You've got two great quarterbacks. If the first one that you name the starter gets injured, second one's more than capable, and then maybe you fill a void with a veteran guy in the transfer portal. Last year it was, hey, if one of these guys leaves, we are screwed because if that guy gets hurt, who do we turn to? Right. Um, and so, uh, again – Last year, the players had the leverage. This year, I think the coaches have the leverage for that exact reason. You're not going to lose three guys in, in that quarterback room out of the four. It's just not going to happen. And plus, I think to your point, like you said, you've got some guys that are considered quote unquote backups that see the future, that see like, hey, there is a light at the end of the tunnel for me to compete and actually be the starting quarterback at Ohio State. All right. So let's set that aside. We could talk about quarterbacks for hours and hours and and never get the resolution. We'll see what transpires with this last week of spring camp for the Buckeyes. But where where else would you look, Zach, as the most pressing current question for Ohio State's roster? Man, you know, <laughs> I want to give the answer of I don't know if there's many glaring <laughs> holes. Um, you know, but you think about that. There's obviously one, and and it's the offensive line. And I think um, that's not from the lack of talent. That's not from um, the guys that are there not being able to do the job. I just think your attention has to be there because you question the depth a little bit. And right now in the spring, especially in fall camp, you have to be able to build that depth. Um, and, 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 especially knowing that, hey, last year, how they end the season against Missouri might be the worst performance that that offensive line has had in, in quite some time. Years. And so how do they yeah. build how do they build off of that? Um, you know, Seth, Seth McLaughlin, I know they absolutely love him. I think he's going to be a massive asset to the to this offensive line. But there's still still are questions. Those guys are, are going to be uber talented, and and I know for a fact you're going to see a different product on the field um, this year com compared to last year. But there still is the unknown. They still have to go out and do it. And so when you look at this Ohio State football team, if there is one glaring hole or one area that you're going to turn your attention to, the rest of the team's loaded. That offensive line needs to step up. I mean, you even look in the backfield. You've got Quinchon Judkins and, and Travion Henderson and Dallin Hayden, and the list goes on and on of dudes that are going to be able to run the football and, and break tackles and make people miss. But you still have to be able to do the fundamental things of football, and we've seen the great teams year over year over year have offensive lines that are able to protect their quarterback and that are able to get some kind of push on the offensive line in the run game. And it's felt to me, Zach, like maybe it's just spring and maybe it's new stuff and new wrinkles like student appreciation day scrimmage. We saw a handful of different things. You know, we don't have to give away X's and O's and I probably couldn't draw them up anyway. Um, new things for the rushing attack. Will Howard, Devin Brown, Lincoln Keenholz could all run the football for Ohio State at the quarterback position. Chip Kelly's influence on that. It's always he has this reputation as being, you know, run and gun and and no no huddle and throw it all over like he he wants to run the football a lot and do it with a bunch of diversity and we've seen different looks for that again you have to have the offensive line if you're going to be able to do that but it this spring has felt very different with like Luke Montgomery Josh Fryer there on the right side like doing doing some things that don't require them necessarily to just mash people straight ahead like different polls, different opportunities that we've seen. It feels like the Chip Kelly influence is going to help some of that with the offensive line, that it maybe doesn't have to just be like 
the best offensive line we've ever seen at Ohio State for this offense to still find another level. It's going to help a lot. Chip Kelly is known to have a whole bunch of pre-snap motion that you saw. You know, he did at Oregon. He's been doing it at UCLA. He's going to he's going to do those things at Ohio State. The other thing you hit the nail on the head that's going to help any offensive line is a running quarterback. A quarterback that's able to get downhill. Um, look at you know the JT Barrett to the world, the Justin Fields. You know, and and those were really good offensive lines. But the point is. If you have an unblocked guy, it's okay because the quarterback can keep it on any play. And now you bring the read option into play, which is so much easier to block rather than, hey, just getting straight downhill. Um, there's so many more double teams. There's a lot more move of the offensive line. Those running lanes open up more. It just stresses the defense. And so you're going to see that a lot, especially knowing that you've got some quarterbacks that can run the football. The other thing is it looks different. And this is the best comparison that I can give is you had – Urban Meyer, who loved running the, the quarterback, loved running the football, uh, was kind of a, a you know 70% run to 30% pass kind of guy, to now, or you know, to Ryan Day, who was maybe the opposite, 70% pass, 30% run, liked airing it out, liked spreading the field, to now Chip Kelly's almost right in the middle of them. Mm. You know, you, you got you got a guy who is going to stress the defense in the run game, loves to run the football, but also wants to air it out and, and put a lot of stress on those safeties trying to come up into the box in the run game. So for Buckeye fans, it's you're going to get that happy medium. You're going to get the running quarterback. You're going to get that zone read. You're going to get the triple option. But then you're also going to get an air raid offense that it's going to throw the ball down the field. That's not just going to dink and dunk and do screen passes that you saw in Urban's offense. So I love it, and I'm super excited because you're getting that happy medium of both offenses that we've seen been so successful here at Ohio State. All right, well let's let's switch over and pretend like it's Buck IQ and Ohio State's got to replace Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers at linebacker. Know that Cody Simon. Uh, has the veteran experience. He's been a starter for Ohio State before. And then you're seeing C.J. Hicks and and then Sonny Styles moving into that position from safety. Both have more athleticism than just about any human walking the earth, but that still feels like the only place on the defense where there might be any quote-unquote uncertainty. It's hard to for me to look at this and see exactly how that works in terms of scheme, personnel, the whole deal, even if you know that there's probably enough talent for Jim Knowles and James Laurinaitis to do anything they, they could dream up. It's definitely the 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 I don't even call it a weakness, the 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 hole on the defense that everyone has their attention to. But you've got Cody Simon, who we saw last year as a great player with tons of experience. And then you you're arguing over two guys that were <laughs> maybe top 15 in the country coming out of high school, right? It's and pretty CJ good. It's pretty good if yeah, you can have CJ it. Hicks and Sonny Styles, right? Top 15 players in the country. So um yeah, I mean I think you're going to see a little bit of uh, different looks than we've normally seen in the past. Normally, you, Ohio State so often is in that nickel package, which is that four-two-five um, defense. I think this year you're going to see them playing with with a couple different looks, especially knowing how athletic CJ is, how athletic Sonny is. Um, you're going to see Cody Simon roam that middle much more and, and play that true middle linebacker position that we haven't seen in a couple years. Um but yeah, I'm excited to see what those guys can do because they do bring so many uh, or, or just a different skill set that we have from a normal steel chambers or someone like that. Like CJ Hicks and Sonny Styles are such good blitzers. They play great on the line of scrimmage and getting pressure on the quarterback. They're also great at coveraging uh, in the pass game, right? Like you line up a tight end or a running back against those guys, they can hang with them all day long. So you're just going to see them do some different things that um, – we haven't seen in the past, but at the same time, it's, hey, you got some great dudes that are playing linebacker that are athletic as hell that are still going to make plays, get their nose dirty, and you're going to see the silver bullet defense flying around and running the football. Yeah, and it seems like maybe Caleb Downs is a key part of that. This guy might be as good as advertised. Unbelievable, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, a uh, you know, to be able to get a guy like that in the portal, and for him to be a program changing person, like this is this is uncharted territory. Normally, you get those guys, you know, they commit to you out of high school, they come in as true freshmen and just ball out. When are you ever getting a All American freshman of the year in, in all of college football come into your team and be able to patrol a position that I don't want to call it um, 
I don't want to call it lackluster, but in some big games the past couple of years, where have we seen some of the issues? At that safety position, right? You think back to the Michigan game last year. Um, you, you think back to the Georgia game the year before that and the Michigan game before that. It's, you know, there's some glaring holes in that back end of the defense. So to be able to bring a guy like Caleb Downs and and put him, plug him in to the culture, to the middle of the defense, from a leadership standpoint, from a swagger standpoint. And you and I talk about this all the time. Defense is all about playing with confidence, um, reading and reacting. Uh, and so much of that comes from just, hey, looking at my keys, I know what I'm doing. There was a quote he just said this past week, which I love. It's, you know, when he got to Alabama, it was like, it's not that, you know, I'm lucky to be here. It's that I was meant to be here and that I'm meant to be able to play. It doesn't matter how old I am. Right. And I'm obviously yeah. paraphrasing a little bit, but that's what he brings to his defense. And that's what you need when, you, when you're playing at Ohio State playing defense. It's, hey, we're here. We have a mindset. They're, you're not getting past us. Yeah. Are you, are you excited for Saturday in the spring game, Zach? I, it feels like I'm not trying to diminish any of it. I love it. Any opportunity to go watch Ohio State and, and cover it, I'm going to do. But if, it's like some of these have become like the thudded up and like tempo yeah. practices and not like a full game. Like, And I'm not saying that anyone should go tackle on the 15th day of spring and like jeopardize the health of a team. But it's not quite the same as the spring games that you played in. So I don't know if if the excitement level is still there for you uh, or not to go watch something like this. I'm excited because anytime you can see Ohio State play on a football field, I mean it's an exciting time, right? <laughs> doesn't matter if it's doesn't matter if it's the middle of April, doesn't matter if it's uh, you know last week in August or you know middle of January. It's uh, it's always exciting to see those guys out on the field, especially during their you know, or in their home stadium in front of you know Ohio State fans. So I'm excited to see what those guys can do. You're for sure. Um, it, it's kind of compare it more to like an All Star game, right? You go to the NBA All Star game, people are still going to say they're excited to see LeBron James and all those guys <laughs> play. You know, it's not like they're gonna you know not no one's going to go to the game because it's a exhibition. Right. People are still going to fill the stands. People are still going to be super excited about what they see. Um, it's only going to increase the hype on social media for the next three months till they go into into fall camp, which I don't know if Ryan loves, but us media people and us fans and former players, we love because God only knows we're we're on social media watching highlights from every practice <laughs> in the spring. Yeah, well, if he's worried about the hype, he should probably not let Jeremiah Smith play on Saturday. That would be my oh. guess. <laughs> we didn't even talk about it. We'll just save it, and that way I can get you to come back and talk about the spring game next week because it's been too long since yeah. we had a Boren Blitz. We, we, we're going to save some of that content because we could talk for hours on some of these guys with the hype around them, and I'm, uh, yeah, that's what I'm excited about. I wish we are playing Akron August 30th, 31st, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, I don't care. I'm excited, Austin. That's going to be like the biggest game in the world. I know that you're you're preparing the tailgate right now. Hopefully, there's enough oh. fireball out there for everybody before kickoff. Um, I owe you one. I think we broke some of the streak last year, and maybe that didn't help the Buckeyes. So I'll have to take some self reflection on that and look in the mirror. But um, anyway, yeah, it's been too long. We got him back, Zach Bourne, giving those thoughts, breaking it down uh, with a Bourne Blitz on the podcast daily to get this week kicked off. The last week of spring camp for the Buckeyes, and it'll end on Saturday in the Horseshoe. Can't wait to see Zach Boren there. Uh, have a great week. Thanks for joining me uh, and Zach. We'll talk to you all later.